Now think about yourself stepping in to help. You share your own experiences and maybe include some uplifting stories from others. As you weave these stories together into a powerful message, something incredible happens. The person you're talking to starts to see a glimmer of hope. They might even say, I can see now. Before you came into my life, I was blind and lost in the dark. Your words and the stories you share have the power to bring clarity and light to someone who couldn't see a way out before. While I pondered this notion, it struck me, can people really create light using their intelligence and words? The answer is yes, absolutely. Let me tell you about this incredible power we have as humans simply by talking to each other. It's amazing, filled with so much potential and strength. Whether it's a mom talking with her daughter, a dad having a heart to heart with his son, or a salesperson connecting with a customer, there's nothing more magical and impactful than words. They have this extraordinary ability to change lives and shape futures. Words can truly work miracles. That's why communication is so vital. Words can work miracles. Their power is almost godlike. In fact, ancient texts say that the word was God and God was the word. Isn't that mind blowing? Words and God being one and the same. And that's why becoming a good communicator is so crucial. Now let me share some valuable tips on how you can achieve effective communication. First and foremost, communication starts with having something good to say. It's not just about talking. It's about making sure what you articulate is meaningful and worthwhile. This requires preparation. You need to gear up to express yourself, not just for this year, but for the years to come. That means investing time in learning, taking classes, reading books, and expanding your knowledge so that you have something good to say, something that can make a positive impact on others. Let me introduce you to four powerful words that can help you develop something good to say. The first word is interest. This means developing a genuine curiosity about people and the world around you. Take an active interest in what's happening, whether it's economic, politics, religion, social issues, or new opportunities that are emerging. By cultivating a fresh interest in these areas, you'll find you have more to share with others. The second word is fascination. This takes your interest to the next level. Fascination is about being deeply curious and eager to learn, just like children are during their early years. Consider how much children absorb in their first six years. They're continuously absorbing new information because they're fascinated by everything around them. While adults may walk past a line of ants without noticing, a child might stop and exclaim, don't step on those ants, I'm studying them. They see the world with wonder and amazement. Have you ever thought about how an ant can carry something much larger than itself? That kind of fascination drives profound learning and understanding. It's the same type of curiosity that can help you discover new things and have more to share in your conversations with others. The next important thing to focus on is building your vocabulary. Let me share something interesting that some of my friends discovered during a survey they conducted with prisoners who were part of a rehabilitation program. They weren't initially looking for this connection, but they found it anyway. There's a clear link between a person's vocabulary and their behavior. They noticed that individuals with a limited vocabulary tended to have more behavioral problems. If you think about it, this makes sense. Words are like lenses that help you see and understand the world. If you don't have a strong vocabulary, it's like trying to see with blurry vision. Now, Imagine the kind of mistakes you might make in judgment when your view of the world isn't clear. Without a good vocabulary, you can misunderstand situations, misinterpret others, and make poor decisions because you're not seeing the full picture. Next, let's talk about something equally important, sensitivity. Sensitivity means being able to understand where people are coming from, what they've been through, and what's happening in their lives. This is where sensitivity training comes in. 
It helps you become more aware of and better understand people who are different from you or who are going through tough times. It's essential to try your best to be sensitive to the struggles and challenges others might be facing. What's going on in their lives? How can you show empathy and understanding? There are two great things that were said about Jesus that can help us understand the importance of sensitivity. First, it's mentioned that he was touched by the situations he saw people in. He felt genuinely moved by their misery and hardships. This isn't just about feeling sorry for someone. It's about truly being affected by what others are going through. The second point is that Jesus wasn't just touched, he was moved. He didn't just feel something and then move on. He was deeply stirred emotionally by what he witnessed. If you wanna be an effective communicator, it's essential to be both touched and moved, not just by your own challenges, but also by the struggles others are facing. This is where sensitivity plays a key role in connecting with others and making a real impact through your words. When you're 40 and trying to connect with a 12 year old, it takes a special kind of sensitivity. You need to be aware not only of where you are in life, but also of where that 12 year old is coming from. A good way to bridge that gap is by remembering what it was like when you were 12. Take a moment to go back in time. Think about how you felt, what you went through, and let those memories resonate with you again. This will help you understand and empathize with their situation, guiding the way you communicate with them. Personally, I don't have any trouble relating to 12 year olds. I can remember almost every day of being 12. It's a unique time because for one, you're not quite a teenager yet. Words are a way of showing what's happening inside your mind and heart. But what if you can't see things clearly, you can't express yourself well? Think about it. Imagine how tough it would be to live like this for five, 10, or even 20 years without getting any better at it. Over time, this could turn into a serious problem. Your behavior might start to change and your world could begin to feel smaller, more confined. Why does this happen? It's because when you can't see clearly and you struggle to express yourself, your world naturally shrinks. It's like the space around you gets tighter, more limited. After a while, you might find yourself feeling like you don't need more room than a small cell. Your world feels so confined because your ability to see and express yourself is limited. And this lack of clarity makes your surroundings feel smaller. That's why it's so important to expand your vocabulary. The more words you know, the better you can express yourself and the bigger your world becomes. When I used to drive a lot, I had a simple method for learning new words. I would write them down on cards and at the end of each day, I'd focus on mastering just two or three of those words. It was a straightforward but effective way to build my vocabulary and keep learning. My daughter, Linda, has a really great routine she does with my grandkids every morning. She introduces them to what she calls the word for the day. She writes this word on a chalkboard and the kids not only memorize it, but also learn what it means. Throughout the day, she'll randomly ask them, what's the word for the day? It's like a fun little game they play together. Linda repeats this question several times during the day to make sure the word sticks in their minds. The idea behind this is pretty awesome. Having a word for the day, why not give it a try? It's a simple but powerful way to build your vocabulary, which helps you see things more clearly, understand better, and express yourself more effectively. When you can put words to what's in your heart, mind, and soul, it becomes even more meaningful. So why not make it a habit to learn a new word each day? It's a fun and valuable way to improve your language skills and in turn, your ability to communicate, connect with others. Now let's talk about the next part of being a good communicator, saying things in a way that really hits home. Here's a simple list of tips on how to communicate effectively. First, you need to be sincere. If you truly want to connect with others, your sincerity 
should come through in your words. Another important tip is repetition. It's often said that repetition is the mother of skill, and I couldn't agree more. I've been in this field for 35 years, and repeating things has been a big part of how I've sharpened my skills. The more you practice and repeat something, the better you get at it. Next, let's discuss the strength of being brief. Sometimes saying less can make a bigger impact. Think about how Jesus gathered his disciples. His message was quite short and to the point. He simply walked around, looked at a person and said, you follow me. That's brief, but it was powerful. So why could Jesus make such a significant impact with so few words? It all comes down to personal development, which is a substantial part of what we're discussing now. Here's my take on why Jesus could convey so much with just a few words. It's about everything he was that he didn't have to say. Just like Jesus, parts of who you are can make a strong impact with a few carefully chosen words. Think about how you can apply this notion in your own life, whether you're talking to a child, having a conversation with a coworker, or discussing something with a client, sometimes less is more. It's not always about saying a lot. It's about saying the right things in a manner that resonates. Now let's proceed to the next significant part of effective communication, reading your audience. This may sound basic, but it's a critical ability. My strength lies in offering clear concepts. And one key concept in communication is being able to read your audience. Imagine you're talking to a child. It's crucial to pay attentive to their facial expressions and body language. Observe for small signs that reveal their feelings toward what you're saying. Are they engaged? Bored? These hints help you determine if you need to modify your approach. Maybe you need to be firmer in your delivery, or possibly you should tone it down if you're coming on too strong. Being efficient at reading your audience and understanding the signals they transmit assists in differentiating your approach becoming a more effective communicator. So how do you improve at reading your audience? Initially, focus on body language. It can tell you a lot. Body language provides hints about when to alter your approach, when to keep going, and when to take a pause. For instance, if someone crosses their arms and lowers their chin, they might be feeling defensive or closed off. That's when you might need to dig deeper into your bag of anecdotes and pull out something genuinely gripping. Reading these nonverbal cues helps you understand if the conversation might be challenging. Next, pay attention to listening. It can inform you as much as body language does. For example, with children, you can often tell if they're growing impatient by what they say. Kids are usually quite frank about how they're feeling. If they begin wondering how long your speech is going to take within the first 30 seconds, that's an evident signal that you need to change things up. Take a moment, listen to their response, and adjust your approach accordingly. Maybe you need to simplify your language, find a more relatable example, or even soften or strengthen your tone. So remember, effective communication isn't just about what you say, it's also about reading your audience. Tune into what you see and hear to better connect and make your communication more impactful. Now, let's delve into a crucial facet of communication, reading what you feel. This skill is essential for picking up on subtle emotional cues. Interestingly, women are usually better at this than men. While men are adept at noticing visual and auditory signals, they may need some training to spot those subtle emotional signals crucial for effective communication. Recognizing the emotions in a situation can prevent language faux pas. Let's envisage a situation where you want to ask someone, what's troubling you? But instead you blurt out, what's wrong with you? A small slip like this can drastically alter the tone of the conversation. It's a preventable communication blunder especially if you're attuned to emotional signals. Women often excel in this skill 
with a seeming sixth sense when it comes to detecting emotions. Historically speaking, men were providers who went off to hunt or work. In contrast, women developed a sharpened awareness for potential threats as they stayed closer to home. This instinctual ability is extremely valuable when it comes to communication. Consider the age-old scenario of a flock of sheep and a disguised wolf. Some wolves are so cunning that they've perfected a sheep's disguise. In this analogy, a man might overlook the cleverly disguised wolf, but a woman, attuned to emotional cues, would call its bluff. This skill of reading emotions is not just vital in communication, but it can also bolster personal growth. Understanding and acting on these emotional signals can improve various facets of life. So, apart from focusing on what you see and hear, remember to tune into what you feel. It's an invaluable skill that can boost your connections with others and your overall navigation through life. Now let's discuss the final piece of the effective communication puzzle, intensity. When words, whether of love, hate, faith, or courage, are filled with genuine emotion, that's when they leave a mark. Here's a little advice. Pour more of your true self into your words. Avoid language laxity, just as carelessness on the freeway can cause accidents. Lax communication can lead to misunderstandings. When you speak, let your words reflect your true self. This not only makes your communication potent, but also fosters deeper connections with others. A crucial aspect to remember is to regulate your emotions. They shouldn't overwhelm unless the situation demands it. A common leadership aphorism states, don't shoot a cannon at a rabbit. Sure, it might seem effective momentarily, but then you're left without a rabbit. Effective communication is about choosing the right words, infused with just the right amount of emotion that strikes the perfect balance. And there is another quintessential truth about communication. The more you genuinely care, the stronger you can be. Your caring nature gives you the tenacity when guiding your children or to handle challenges. It also allows you to be more effective in problem solving. True caring is the key. It needs to be genuine. For instance, if someone preaches to me about my soul being damned because of my sinful tendencies, it should be done with sorrow, not with joy. Certain conversations hold weight only when laced with genuine emotion and sincerity. Accordingly, gauging the right amount of emotion to exhibit is important. Remember, considerately chosen words combined with a genuine interest in your discourse and an expanded vocabulary can significantly enhance your ability to connect with others over time. Finally, to improve your communication skills, deliberate effort is required. Take notes, actively involve yourself, gather knowledge from diverse resources. Remember, a substantial part of effective communication is preparation. The more knowledgeable you are, the better you'll be at communicating your point. Don't take learning lightly, because being prepared plays a significant role in communication. 